Well, guys, you know this day was coming and you knew it was inevitable. I hope you guys are not getting tired of the How Strong series because I am yet to go over the Immortal Hulk, a.k.a. the current Hulk that's going on in the Immortal Hulk run. The Immortal Hulk run so far has been getting a lot of positive feedback. A lot of fans have been loving it, me and myself included, going back to his older days with the horror elements. This series in particular is well known for its healing factor feats. This is really solidifying himself as actually being immortal. But how strong is he? Most like, just like most personalities of the Hulk, the Hulk's power depends on his rage and you can kind of get an idea of how strong he is or where his rage is based on you know how he's emitting gamma either maybe low levels of gamma from his eyes or no gamma at all from his eyes or at the highest levels ever that we probably won't we might not see in the Immortal Hulk series where he was world breaker levels for all we know Immortal Hulk more than likely has a form like that also but it's too soon to tell I mean if he has a strength increase factor I don't see why he wouldn't have a world breaker Hulk state either who says Green Scar, aka World War Hulk, is the only Hulk that can get this mad. Like I said in the other videos, you probably might not know unless you haven't seen my other ones. I consider World Breaker the World Breaker actual name of World Breaker an actual anger level, not the actual personality. Most people call World War Hulk and World Breaker the same thing. I like to classify them as World War Hulk as the Green Scar, and he just reached the World Breaker levels of anger, which is the first persona to reach that level of anger. But I've always been a firm believer of the Immortal Hulk being able to do the same. But without further ado, how strong is he? Like World War Hulk, Immortal Hulk has some interesting levels of battle feats. For those that don't know what's going on with the Immortal Hulk, he is the personality who is pretty much the ringleader of it all, as explained here. He's pretty much the main coach that's telling everybody where to do where. Which is why this run is even out in the first place. Devil Hulk has always been in his mind, but this is the first time he's really emerged to his own storyline type thing. Immortal Hulk has been shown to be able to stomp other Gamma members like this Maverick Red Hulk that had battle suit armor on top of the fact he's a Gamma member. Showing to be on a complete other level. Completely curb stomps him into the ground battle feet wise. Gives him like a swollen eye and everything. Red Hulk tries to come back and fight him, but it seems like it only pisses him off that he crushes his hand with his vice grip. One unique thing that we see Immortal Hulk do a lot is absorb Gamma out of other Gamma beings. One could say he's amping himself consistently throughout the series, and some could say this is making his base or calm level strength a lot higher, since this is not the only Gamma member he's done this to. I'm not going to lie, Thor in this run seems to be on some type of fighter type stuff, on some jobber type stuff, but he did say something interesting about the Hulk. Despite what you may think how they write in Thor currently, you have to admit he has a lot of history with the Hulk and he wouldn't know if the Hulk is at another level of power. And he states it here. He states that the Hulk is at a whole new level of power compared to what he's used to, probably due to his rage, rage levels and the fact he absorbed Gamma family members. During the time he fought the Avengers, he had some interesting battle feats, destroying the Hulkbuster suit, which would normally give him a decent fight, but showing this is pretty much paper pancakes to him now. Iron Man had to escape. Black Panther got his suit overloaded. Immortal Hulk also got in a battle with this being named Sasquatch, a being that normally gives him a pretty decent fight and is another Gamma member. Was having little flashback issues, the reason why he was having problem with him at first. They hit them two straighted blows and started going at it, to the point Immortal Hulk started getting the advantage over Sasquatch. Even got his eye poked out by Sasquatch in the process. Rogue almost got overloaded by trying to absorb the Hulk's powers and rage. Female Thor and Hercules tried to restrain him. But the mighty strength of Immortal Hulk even pushes them off of them too. I know how a lot of you may feel about female Thor, but you cannot lie. She has some ridiculous feats. And don't sleep on Hercules either. He has some of the greatest lifting feats of all time in Marvel history. He's one of those people that was able to rotate Earth, godlike strength. This is a little weird because this seems like a low showing. It seems like this will be light work for him considering what he's done in the past. But, you know, comic logic. Hercules is the same being that was literally able to hold the heavens like the heavens like what like how do you lift the heavens like that's like infinite space right or a universe ain't it and for reference guys i know you guys probably don't like jane Foster thor but you gotta admit she has some ridiculous feet she was able to give hercules a challenge in the armor so the same hercules that can rotate the planet and hold the heavens over his head some of the greatest lifting feats and strength feats known to man like yeah they had they had to try against each other in armor so i know this was friendly and probably not serious but the fact that she was able to hang in there like that is amazing he was able to punch Thor so hard. Yeah, Thor, the god of thunder, even though he hasn't been at his right power levels during this time, he actually got a headache, like on some concussion type stuff. Actually battled the super powered up She-Hulk, punched her for like miles. Neighbor and Surfer gets sent flying by this big old beast thingy. Then the Hulk comes in on the very next page and uses his board as a weapon to hurt it. Nothing super flashy, but something cool to note. 
consistently shown to be able to hurt the being that sent Silver Surfer and Namor flying. I like how the Hulk just used the Silver Surfer as board like a dog on weapon. Did I mention he was able to take a bloodlisted attack from Jane Foster Thor and bounce them both off of them like he didn't even do anything? Yeah, he was pretty pissed in this particular instance though. I don't think he's like this mad in all his runs. Character known as Cannonball tried to blitz him. He just got backhanded like he's lightweight. Voyager, known as the Grandmaster's daughter, stated that the Hulk is one of the strongest. If anybody would know, she would. Grandmaster knows a lot. You're still doubting his strength. She stated something else, or at least it was mentioned like this. I wonder if contacting the Hulk was a mistake. If he turns on us, I'm not sure anyone here has the strength to stop him. That's a big statement considering Scarlet Witch is there and Vision. For those that don't know, the Immortal Hulk in this series is confirmed to be linked to this Hail Lord known as the one below all. Not the one above all, the one below all. One could say that the Hulk is his son. One could say that he's an avatar of the one below all. But the one below all cannot enter the realm without the Hulk. So he tried to enter the realm and the Hulk pretty much battlefield removed the one below all. Ewing said in some interviews that this guy is the opposite of the one above all. But I would not scale them in power like that though, y'all. I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily say the one below all is on the one above all's level. That's our far fetch. But still, this is impressive. I don't want to bring up any headcanon, but Immortal Hulk has some really cool energy absorption feet. Consistently shown to be able to absorb energy from a lot of Gamma members consistently throughout his run. The question is, is this actually amping his base levels? That's the question. They're not really saying anything about his base form getting amped or anything, but it seems like it would since he's absorbed Sasquatch, Red Hulk, Maverick, even Weapon H to some degree. Remember what I was talking about earlier about him absorbing Gamma energy? This is what I'm talking about. He absorbed the entire essence out of him. To the point, Sasquatch wasn't even supposedly Sasquatch anymore. Like, this, I mean, are they going to ever get back to this? Like, is this base getting stronger than before because of this? Kind of an underrated feat. There was a radiation explosion that destroyed, like, a whole bunch of planets. Like, the radiation was so big. But it was stated that he was able to survive this solar system-wide radiation explosion-ish thingy kind of sorta-ish. I don't know how to perceive this, but this sounds very impressive. Pretty sure we already knew he could sub uh, survive solar system level stuff, though. Did I mention he was able to toss a Skyfather level being known as Nyx, the God of Darkness, the same being that snapped Zeus's neck? Nothing super impressive, just something cool to watch. Wonder how pissed he was in this comic, though. Something you don't hardly ever see happen to the thing, actually punching the thing so hard where a piece of his body chips. Now, this is an interesting statement that Voyager said. She said, once my father took me to the planet Xerxes, a world that had fallen so close to its sun that it was in perpetual state of violent ground quake, the Hulk's attack feels worse? That's pretty cool. He was in the Green Door Realm-ish type place with a lot of Gamma members. He's destroyed a lot of them with fodder and turning them into goo. I know a lot of people don't really like to respect Wonder Man because he's more of a pacifist and doesn't want to fight and just rather be a movie star, but he's actually very, very powerful. Please don't forget that not only was Wonder Man able to give Abomination the fight, I run for his money actually, but at the end of the day, he was actually able to give Abomination a KO. Wonder Man has fought beings like Hercules before, the god of strength, the same god that I showed you earlier lifting the heavens themselves. A Wonder Man is a beast. More showings of Immortal Hulk just destroying different beings. One feat I feel like that gets overlooked is Weapon H's feats. A lot of people kind of overlook it because, you know, people kind of see Weapon H as like a knockoff character, but when you really sit there and think about it, Weapon H has Gamma-ish Hulk level, Gamma family level strength on top of it with Wolverine type claws. The same claw, the same claws that characters like Wolverine can cut powerhouse Superman level beings with, even though Wolverine doesn't have nowhere near that level strength. These claws allow him to cut beings like this. Now imagine those same claws on a being like a Gamma member Hulk like being. For him to get cut in the face without being killed or knocked out instantly, it's actually absurd when you actually think about it. Like, Wolverine can hurt Gamma members with his claws, and he's like weaker than characters like Spider-Man. Imagine a Gamma member with those level of claws, claws that pretty much ignore durability, meaning that you can cut people even though you don't have the strength to cut them. I know this might possibly be headcanon, but if you do a headcount of all the people that the Hulk has drained in the Immortal Hulk run, it could be possibly heavily implied that his base level in calm state has got to be much higher than the other ones just for the simple of all the gamma he's absorbed in this run alone. For example, something I didn't catch my first read is that the Hulk actually absorbed so much gamma in the area in the gamma site, all the gamma within an actual whole mile he absorbed. Like I said earlier, he absorbed a lot of gamma members like Sasquatch, that's one gamma member. 
Gamma member number two, he drains. Two gamma members in his body. As powerful as the Immortal Hulk scene, if the only reason he's very powerful is we... You have to look at his battle feats. It's similar to World War Hulk and how Grey Hulk has like better inanimate object punching striking feats. Like for example, Grey Hulk is busting the asteroids times the size of Earth. We haven't so far seen Immortal Hulk do anything like that. But based on his battle feats, we know he can with relative ease via scaling and the fact he's above those Hulk forms. Not to mention he's absorbed other Gamma members into his base form. Not saying they are talking about that or they might have actually forgotten. But I'm just saying it could be possibly my head cannon that he could be strong in base because of these factors. But without further ado, one of the reasons why the Hulk is even so special in this Immortal Hulk series is that, in my personal opinion, shows off some of the best healing factor feats of all time in Hulk history. And the Hulk has some really good healing factor feats, but this series in particular did an excellent job at showing it off to its fullest potential. So let's dive into that, shall we? During his fight with this new abomination, he has like this super crazy acid hack stuff that he can shoot out and it actually supposedly nullifies healing factors. I guess that's what it does, but... Despite all of this, despite all of this pain, the Hulk is still able to somewhat adapt and even push through even after all that. Consistently shown to be able to endure these acid craps that messes up his healing factor badly. Like, it was bad. I will admit, this is one of the few parts that annoys me. I mean, I know that they're trying to show off his healing factor, but they do make it seem like his durability is just straight up trash. They make it seem like he's just like flesh and bone, how like other Gamma members just dig all the way through him like it's nothing. Now, I know they're Gamma members and stuff, but either they're amped or something or just, I don't know, they're just trying to show off his healing factor because I find this a little strange. Just gonna rip into him like butter. I mean, I know he's like hurt and weakened, but does his durability actually go down? Uh, whatever. See right here. Now, this is something interesting you don't really notice a lot. Evidently, the, this is the true meaning of the Immortal Hulk. The Immortal Hulk isn't actually immortal per se, but he's basically immortal because he can like, when he dies, you know how people believe in the afterlife. Well, evidently, the Hulk's afterlife is the green door, the green realm. Some could say where the one below all stays. He can choose to revive himself through the green door or not. So it's like the only way to really kill him is to get rid of that whole dimension, I guess, or get rid of the afterlife or get rid of the one below all, which is almost impossible. So in a way, yeah, that's the reason why he's actually immortal because he can resurrect himself. That's what makes him such a scary threat. While he was weak and gets a piece of his chest blown off or stomach, my bad. One of his better healing factors completely heals from his chest being pretty much getting a hole blasted through it. This is impressive. Look at it. And it even heals on panel. Straight up epic. Lightning attacks are light work for Immortal Hulk, by the way. This has happened in the past before where the Vision tried to phase the Hulk to try to defeat him this way. This doesn't work evidently also to the Immortal Hulk either. After draining the Red Hulk of his power, seems to making him stronger, it seems like, but that's not my business. Vision actually tries to fight the Hulk one-on-one. -on -one. That ends up going south and not going well. Phase to his head. Vision gets destroyed. The whole nine yard. Wanda looks freaked out. And the Hulk just walks off like he just a G. Evidently, the Vision never recovered from this, bullying more characters like Hypnosis and snaps his neck. The same Hypnosis was able to put Hermes to sleep, by the way, having mad trouble affecting the Hulk's nervous system. Oh yeah, something I would also like to mention is that, you know, Silver Surf in the past has always got the advantage over the Hulk because he would simply just absorb his energy and the fight is over, and that's that. Well, since the Hulk has been retconned to being more mystical than just scientific, it would make more sense for him to not be able to just be drained now more than likely and it's implied here with rogue trying to do something similar to what the silver surfer does but it just blows her back even though she does succeed in copying his powers but it doesn't like turn him back to normal or nothing or drain him to the point he can't fight back this also happened in world war hulk but that's not even about this i'm not even talking about world war hulk in this video though showing the hulk being revived by the way just for those that don't know oh did i mention that he actually dies division's laser like always the hulk is insane like always and the immortal hulk is no different now when it comes to his power levels is he strong in World War Hulk? Ah, this is that's where it gets a little bit tricky because Immortal Hulk had his moments where, yeah, it does seem like he was strong in World War Hulk, but still weaker than Worldbreaker. By the way, Ewing actually confirmed this, by the way. He's still weaker than Worldbreaker. But that can change in the future because Immortal Hulk technically has the potential to go Worldbreaker too. But if I had to use head cannon and my own speculation, even though the writers haven't said nothing like this, him absorbing Sasquatch, the Red Hulk, kind of makes me think that his base form is at compared to World War Hulk's, but World War Hulk possibly was still angry, I guess, in that run. Oh, by the way, you, for those that don't believe me, Ewing, the writer of Immortal Hulk, still said Worldbreak Hulk was kind of a special case, so I'd say he still is the most crowned the most powerful Hulk. I'm assuming he's talking about without any outside help or power-ups because we all know that recent comic that happened with Immortal Hulk. Ewing, the same guy that writes Immortal Hulk, said Savage Hulk comes out when Devil Hulk gets very angry. So it could mean the Devil Hulk doesn't have the same anger level 
potential, but he could have a higher base due to the game members absorbing and the feats. It seems like, you know, when he overpowered Hercules and Jane Foster Thor, that seemed insane. Same with Wonder Man. So it gets a little tricky scaling him to the other Hulk personalities. I would say he's definitely stronger than the other personalities in their base states for sure. When I say space, I'm talking about calm. So I would put Immortal Hulk over Savage Hulk for sure, even though Savage Hulk might have the better anger increase factor potential other than World War Hulk, of course. I think Immortal Hulk is way stronger than Joey Fix It or Joe Fix It. Grey Hulk, even though Grey Hulk has absurd feats also. Like, none of these Hulks are, like, vastly different than each other other than World Breaker anger level. Like I said before, World Breaker is an anger level. I believe Immortal Hulk has the potential to get that too. But just my synopsis on him, I do think the Immortal Hulk is has the best regenerative healing factor feat so far. He's consistently shown to have an absurd healing factor. Even if he does seem like his durability is lacking, I think that's just for writing purposes to, for an excuse to show off his healing factor. He doesn't have no super crazy flashy feats when it comes to other feats. Battle feats, his battle feats is what's impressive. Pretty much giving Thor a concussion, overpowered Jane Foster Thor, the same Jane Foster Thor that can still make Hercules in the arm wrestle, the same Hercules that can lift the heavens, the same Hercules that can move the rotation of the earth. So when you, when you dissect the battle feats of Immortal to Hulk with the people he fights it's even more insane Wonder Man another being that has been shown to give Thor a run for the money Wonder Man and Immortal Hulk was able to manhandle these people so yeah it is a it is a ridiculous feat to be able to fight all these beings when it comes to pure strength beings with hacks are even having troubles with him Rogue can't hardly absorb his power and stuff like that he is definitely a force to be waking with but I'm still going to stick with my head cannon. I do believe his base is probably the highest due to gamma absorption. But that could just be me trying to dissect stuff. But yeah, Warbreaker still is the title. But did you guys enjoy my little rundown of the Immortal Hulk? I hope so. Did I miss any feats? I don't think I did. And I know you all are probably thinking, why didn't I include that Celestial Hulk thing? The only reason I didn't include that is because... It doesn't really feel like it's something he achieved on his own. I feel like it would be weird to kind of classify that as the Immortal Hulk personality by itself. Now, if Immortal Hulk ends up getting to that level or something like that, or some, not even to that level, if he ends up getting higher than World War Hulk or something in the, in the future with an anger boost or something, then that's different. But I want to see it happen with no outside help then it could really solidify him actually being his power because he is connected. I like the fact that Immortal Hulk is confirmed to be mystical. Maybe the other Hulks are mystical too. That's what makes him immortal. What makes him really unique is the ability to resurrect himself with the green door, the realm, the, the one above the one below all realm, the gamma realm. That's what makes it a mystical being, similar to how Sidorak and Juggernaut are linked. I think the one below all and the Hulk are connected like that. How do you guys like the red kind of the Mortal Hulk being? Do you like his feats? That I go over his feats pretty well and in depth? That I miss anything? I don't think I did. I went through a lot of this stuff. What do you guys think? Is there more that I, you would like to see in this series? Is there any recommendations you want to post in the comments below? Make sure you post them in the comments below. And I will see you guys next time.